book launch like drops, my love. I'm telling you, it is. It so, is the most intense thing I've ever done. <laughs> yeah, let, let's talk about it. So you're a certified health coach. You literally just launched your book called Fix Your Period. And you, we've known each other for years. You are so incredibly knowledgeable on like hormones, you. your period, like all the stuff that we, like I don't really know about. And um, <laughs> really, like I don't, yeah, I have no idea. So it's like this, and I think this book is gonna just impact so many lives, right? Of And just bring knowledge and visibility and you know your stuff, girl. So can you just tell with the community a little bit about who you are, why you wrote the book, what the book's about? Yeah, I would love to. So thank you, first of all, for having me on. I so appreciate it. I love this series. I've seen some awesome women who I happen to know on it all week long. Oh, good. And yeah, so thank you for including me. Um, yeah, so basically, you know, I've been doing this work now for 10 years. I got certified as a health coach, then did additional training to become a, a women's health coach because I used to have horrible period problems and major yeah. hormone issues. And they affected me to the point where I had to change my career. I had to move. I had to, I actually didn't have to, but I ended marriage. Like things were really intense for a long time. And it took me ages to try and figure out my own issues. And so in becoming a health coach and just, and deciding to write this book, it, for me, it was very much a decision based on my 20 year old self who really struggled. And I, you know, I, cause I remember not getting any answers, going to many different doctors. I was on the pill at the time and having all of these side effects that nobody could, you know, could figure out. Yeah. I, you know, I, I ended up in the ER after having an allergic reaction to a UTI medication when I was, yeah, I was in my early twenties at the time. And that was finally my last straw. I was like, okay, I got to figure this out because yeah. I can't keep going through the medications. My OBGYN was a revolving door. It was ridiculous. And I had no clue about how my body worked. And that's been my biggest mission for like nearly 20 years now is that I want women to understand how their bodies work because I could not get the answers for the life of me. And it wasn't until I saw an acupuncturist who explained what the pill was doing and I was like, no way, no way, <laughs> it can't be the pill. But as I understood it more, it made sense and it became more feasible. And so that's really what drove me to do this work and write this book because I get questions constantly from women mm -hmm. on a daily basis, multiple times a day that are, are along the lines of, this is what's happening. I don't know if this is normal or not. And I don't know what to do. I've been given all these medications. I've tried all these things. And that's basically the story of most women's lives. We are okay. struggling. We're completely in the dark. And I just feel like it needed to change. Yeah, and I don't think there's like enough information out there. Like I know there's some people talking about hormones and like, but I just don't think there is. I remember like you and I had a conversation a couple of years ago and I was like, yeah, I'm yeah. on the pill, you know? And I was like, oh, is that bad? Like, but I'm like, no, like I'm on the good pill. You're like, no, <laughs> it's like, no, shoot. like there's no good pill, you know? So it's, you know, oh, it's, we don't know, you know? I mean, there's not yeah. so much information. I think really like we're living in such a fast paced society and it's so noisy mm -hmm. and, and like, there's so much information out there. It's like, what do you believe and who do you listen to? It's, oh my gosh, I completely agree with that. And it's so crazy. I've come onto this and I don't even have my book. Hold on. <laughs> this, is, this is like the galley copy. Hold on. Let me get a, let yeah, me I don't have, copy. I don't have your copy yet either. So <laughs> it's ridiculous that I just came onto a live and I'm like, why no, not? it's good. I, guys. Yeah, it's there so it beautiful. I love the cover. Thanks. So I know. I really, I had to fight hard for that cover. Um, but wait a second. What was the question? Oh, there's so much noise. There's so much the like, noise. No one knows like who to listen to. Like, and there's so much information out there. So it's like, how do we know? Like, who? What's the right information? Who to listen to? Because like, even yes. doctors have, and even what some wellness practitioners have like different opinions, right? Like. <laughs> They do. I agree. I love this question because what I always want to say to women is that we have got to stop looking outside of ourselves for what's normal and what's not and really start tuning in. And the first thing I do with my clients is have them track their cycle. I'm like, okay, you need to be able to track your cycle so you can understand what exactly is happening you know, with your menstrual cycle and with your fertility and with your body as, as an overall, you know, like from a overall bird's eye view perspective. And 
when we have this understanding of how our own bodies work, we are not driven by fear and misunderstanding and constantly looking outside of ourselves for the next diet or the next quick fix for whatever period problem you have or whatever issue you have in general. So that's where I start with people because otherwise we're just sort of feeling around in the dark for years on end, as you all know, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, I, I didn't know that I, sh I that the pill was causing these issues or yeah. I didn't know that I was only fertile for 12 to 24 hours every single month while yeah. men are fertile every single day, but the onus of birth control is on us. I mean, you know, we could go on and on. And I think that diets for women in particular are so unbelievably confusing because, you know, I've seen where some women do the keto diet and it stabilizes their blood sugar. It gets their PCOS under control. It helps with their endometriosis. Other women can do the keto diet and completely lose their periods, which is why we have to come back to how we respond to things. I've had women say to me, so I've lost my period. I don't know why. I'm like, okay, well, what's changed? Oh, so I went on the keto diet six months ago. And I'm like, well, that might mean that that diet is not working for you. You're yeah. not eating enough carbohydrates to ovulate consistently and have a period. And so if we don't know these basic things, these nor what's normal for cycles, then we're just like going to just keep searching outside of ourselves and keep trying different things what, rather than just checking in and seeing how we feel when we eat something. Like, yeah. are you exhausted after you eat, uh, you know, after you eat a meal or are you reaching for sugar or coffee? Or do you find that you don't sleep well at night? You know, like, are you starving in, you know, 30 minutes after you eat? All of these are signs from your body, but we're not really taught that. We're just taught to numb out those signs, right? Or like to yeah. extinguish them with coffee or sugar or sleeping pills or whatever. I mean, it's, it's a huge problem in our society, I think. Yeah, so I mean, so when you first started the journey, you personally, like yeah. what, I mean, was it your body at first? And, and like, what would you tell women? Is it just to like really figure out like what's going on, what feels like off? Yes, I would start there because, you know, it's very overwhelming, I found. And, you know, and I bet, you know, that you and many people you who follow you can relate to this, that yeah. when you when you first start to even delve into this world, it's just, it's so overwhelming. And you don't, I mean, first of all, like you said, there's so much noise, so you don't really know what to listen to or, you know, where to begin. And so I always just ask that women focus in on, you know, what they're eating to start with. You know, are you, is, is your blood sugar completely out of control? Are you even eating enough nutrients to support a menstrual cycle? Because what we have to remember with menstrual cycles is that they're not a life or death, um, you know, like an essential service. I yeah, mean, yeah. I'm joking <laughs> about yeah. that. Not, they're not essential services right now. And that's a sort of um, stupid joke, but whatever. Yeah. The point is, is that your body doesn't need that to survive. Yeah. And yeah. so it's going to shut that down if your body doesn't feel like it has the energy to facilitate ovulation, getting yeah. a period, all of it. Because ovulation is a very intense process for your body every month. I mean, we release an egg <laughs> from yeah. an endocrine gland. And then that little gland, you know, the, where the follicle that where, where the egg came out of turns into another endocrine gland and releases progesterone. That's very energy intensive. And yeah. our bodies do that on a regular basis every single month, pretty much. And so if our body says, okay, we don't have enough energy for that, it's just going to shut the whole thing down. And that to me alone is a sign that something is not right. Yeah. Maybe you don't have enough nutrients. Maybe your stress is completely out of control. So it's like there are multiple things, but most of us, generally speaking, I know that that's not the case for everyone, but generally speaking, we have some control over what we're eating and how we're eating. Yeah. So are you eating standing up at the kitchen counter? You might want to try yeah. sitting down. You might want to try chewing your food because chewing is the root cause of all the gut health issues. If we're that's what I've heard. Yes. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. So there are little things that we can all do. Um, you know, I, was, I did a workshop last night and I was talking about my three by three method. And really all that is, is, you know, three half cups of veggies you know, three times a day. And for the most part, we can all do that if, you know, if we have access to decent vegetables. So I think if we can just start to implement little changes, we will see big changes in our cycles and our overall health. Because we, as women, I believe, especially women, have been conditioned to believe that our bodies are very mysterious, 
not yeah. figureoutable at all. And, you know, it's very confusing when you take all these hormonal imbalances into consideration and women just throw their hands up and they're like, I can't even deal. Yeah. So we really have to, I feel like we have to get back to some simplicity and, you know, and tune out all the noise and really just sort of tune into how you're feeling when you eat. Yeah. So two yeah. questions that came up for me, because like my audience are high performers, overachievers, you know, they're go, go, go. Um, so one, I, I mean, I think I know the answer. So it, it's all kind of related, right? To like gut health, like all of it, right? Hormones, gut health, period, right? Is yes. that all kind of, okay, it's all interconnected. All interconnected. All inter Okay. And mm -hmm. then two, like some women, right? Like they're freezing their eggs, maybe they're in their 30s or their 40s or their 50s. Um, so a lot of things are going on. However, it's like, what if we don't get enough vegetables or the eating? Because, right, society's so... I mean, now with coronavirus, everything's kind of slowing down. Yeah. And we don't know what, you know, what's going to come in the future. However, before Corona, like people were just like, go, 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 go. And they weren't yeah. really eating. They were eating on the go. They weren't chewing their food. What do you feel about, um, like if you, if you can't, or you aren't getting the three servings of vegetables, right? right? Do you believe in like the, the powders or like the antioxidant green powders? Like, what are your thoughts on that stuff? Like for yeah. the, the high achiever, like if you can't get that, like quote unquote, like not, per I hate to say perfect diet, but. Right. What I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. I'm a high achiever too. I get yeah. it. <laughs> God, yeah. do I get it? Right. I mean, like we, you know, it's interesting because here's the thing. I feel as though there's a little bit of an evolutionary mismatch happening for female bodies in particular, because we, you know, we were obviously designed to be hunter gatherers. We were not designed to be sitting at desks all day, yep. being on Instagram, you know, all hours of the night, all this stuff. There are a lot of things working against us. So I think that whatever we can do to help to mitigate the effects of this, I call it chronic overstimulation, because that's really what it is. Yeah. Um, we're, you know, I think is a good thing. And so when we're, you know, when you're talking about like powders and supplements and all that, I'm a big fan of those, if that's what you need to do. But I just don't think you can out powder out supplement a, yeah. a diet. And that's, you know, and I think that that's where that evolutionary mismatch comes into play. And I, I'm definitely not trying to be gloom and doom, but I think that it's important for us to recognize that we're kind of swimming upstream a little bit. And so it, and it's also really important for us to recognize that you only get one body. And yeah. is this, you know, is what you're doing right now really worth it? Is there a way that you can take some things off of your plate? Because I really do believe that there there are ways to, to take things or delegate or take things off our plates so that we can have a little bit more spaciousness to chew our foods, to chew our food 20 times a mouthful, you know, whatever yeah. it is. Um, but yes, like coming back to, you know, putting a protein powder into a smoothie, for instance, will definitely help support uh, more stable blood sugar um, and green powders too, if, especially if you're traveling. I feel like things like that are really useful for in terms of supplements. You know, I think a B complex is super helpful because the B vitamins tend to excrete faster in your urine, specific ones, um, when you're more stressed. So when cortisol is higher in your body, so they're going to help support you with that. Vitamin C is also really critical for supporting our adrenal glands and our immune system, of course. But that's really going to help for anyone who is, you know, in a high stress environment, generally speaking. I also think a multivitamin of some kind is, can be really helpful too, just so it's broad spectrum. You're getting nutrients, even if you're unable to, you know, eat as well as you'd like to, generally speaking. And, you yeah. know, always like, and in restaurants and things like that, especially if you're out a lot, I mean, we're not now, sadly, right. but we will be. And, yeah. um, you know, what I think is, you can kind of be a pain and, and ask, you know, for a different portion on your plate. So ask for more vegetables, less protein, you know, whatever it is that you can do to support yourself, um, I think is, is really, you know, it's just going to be helpful, generally speaking, rather than just saying like, screw it, I'm just, just going to eat the ice cream and call it. A yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And so adrenal fatigue, because that's like pretty popular, right? Like it's a lot of people have it, they don't really realize they may have it. Yeah. Um, so what are the signs? Is it just that you're lethargic or you're tired? And like, how do you get over that? Because I know I've heard people in the past be like, well, I've been sleeping and I've been trying to like recalibrate, but it's just, you know, I'm just always feeling tired. I mean, I know yeah. it probably goes back to the diet, right? And taking care of yourself, but anything else that you can kind of, um, 
like let us know, you know? Yes, definitely. You know, well, the, it's been renamed for the most part. So it's technically okay. not, yeah, but it's, see, you know, I'm glad see, you Nicole, it I have no, I, I know. I'm like, it's a, you shouldn't really know I need that, to read your book. terminology. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, Kevin. Um, so yes, it's actually called HPA axis dysfunction now. And it's not as sexy as adrenal fatigue. I feel like adrenal fatigue definitely helps us understand it better. Um, but for the most part, your adrenals don't really become fatigued. It's more just the entire system. So when they say HPA, they mean hypothalamic pituitary adrenal. So that's in your brain talking to your adrenals. So it's like the whole feedback loop gets messed up. And so what happens is for some of us, our cortisol is super high in the morning and we wake up, we sort of bolt up and we're anxious and kind of sweating and we're stressed pretty much immediately, which I, I'm guessing that that's the case for quite a few of us, especially in our go, go, go world. And then for others of us, we can't even get out of bed if we've even gotten nine hours of sleep. It's just like roll out after snoozing the alarm five times and you know, then you got a gallon of coffee just to get you going. So yeah. it looks a little bit different for each of us, but ultimately it's, it's one of those two scenarios. And then on the flip side of that, when you go to bed, you can't sleep or you, pa you pass out immediately and you sleep for nine hours and you do it again and you're still exhausted. But for others of us, we can't sleep, we can't stay asleep. So it is a whole, it's, an, it's affecting your whole system. And the problem with all of this is that it's not just one system, right? Like your endocrine system is an entire full body system yeah. and your adrenals talk to your brain, your brain then talks to your ovaries. There's a conversation with the thyroid, the pancreas. I mean, all of these are connected. And so you'll see the symptoms that we normalize, like I was just describing in our mm -hmm. society, start to show up as menstrual cycle problems. And when you are starting to have period problems, to me, that's a sign that this stuff has been going on or brewing below the surface for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I would say that, um, you know, when it comes to just adrenal health in general, yeah, sleep, you can't, I just don't believe that you can get better without sleep. And so we really yeah. need to prioritize that, whatever that looks like. And again, like I was saying before, I really believe that we're worth it. I actually really, really believe that you are worth getting sleep and taking care of yourself so that you can show up in the world with your big mission because we all, you know, we all have big missions and I want to see that for women. But I think that having boundaries is so difficult for us at, for many reasons. Yeah. I, I'm the chronic yes person, so I really get that. Um, but yes, mm -hmm. like having a boundary around a bedtime and having a bedtime routine and making sure that you're not looking at screens in the middle of the night. And if you are looking at screens, you have, you know, the, the night filter on on both your computer and your phone. And, you know, it's all the way down on dim. And also, too, like making your bedroom a sanctuary. So making sure that you do yeah. have black lines and you are, you know, you're diffusing some kind of essential oil that's going to help you sleep. And maybe you're using CBD to help calm any anxiety down. You're not booking appointments super early in the morning first thing if you feel like you're not a morning person and you need some time in the morning. I feel like as women business owners, you know, at the level of your audience, you, a lot of us have the control to do that or have the ability to control those kinds of things. So I would say things yeah. like that. And then also, you know, not eating late at night because high blood sugar raises cortisol in the body and, you know, it's a vicious cycle. So there, I really do think we have a lot of control and that's going to help you heal your adrenal glands and vitamin C. Vitamin C yes. and a B complex really, really help too. Oh my gosh, Nicole, those are such good tips because I know like I even, they say like, you know, like who are you sleeping with? I'll sleep with my phone. Like, I mean, who, it's like, right? It's like, who are you, like, I'm sleeping on my phone. Like, and it's like, you know, I know Mel Robbins talks about this. It's like, like put your phone out, but sometimes it's hard, you know? And it's I know so a hard. Lot of, yeah, a lot of people it's sleep with their certifiable phone. addiction, girl. It really yeah. is. Oh yeah, I mean, I've been, you know, I've been going through this launch. So of course I'm like my bed, my phone is on my bedside table and we're on the West Coast right now. So by the time we, he, Hayden and I get up, my team has been working on the East Coast for three hours. So <laughs> I have been, it is heart palpitation. So I've definitely yeah. not been walking my talk for the last few, I don't know, three or four weeks. It's been hard, but I do really think I, I will get back to it. But I, you know, I think yeah. that we can at least make an effort and see, put, leave your phone downstairs or leave it in, yeah. you know, in the living room or whatever when you go into the bedroom and see if you can do that for one night. I ask everyone to try and just do that little test. See how it goes. When you wake up, you'll be like, oh my God, I'm not checking my phone right this second. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. really a great feeling. So yeah, I hear you though. It's this phone thing. When I think back to like 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, when I first got my, like when I first got an iPhone, yeah. 
I, it never even would have occurred to me. I remember like 12, 13 years ago, um, my husband at the time would send, started sending me text messages. And I was like, what is this text thing? This is so annoying. Can you just call me already? Uh, yeah, it totally ate those words. I mean, it is, it has completely taken over our lives. And I think we have to fundamentally make a very concerted effort to, to address that because it will, it wrecks us. It will really wreck Mentally us. Mentally too. Like you said, yes. if everything's connected. I mean, it could even cause like the mental, you know, the angst, the anxiety. And what I love about your tips is like, you know, if it's either the phone or a diffuser, like you're saying something small, listen to your body in the morning, right? Yeah. Like, you know, there was a time, um, I just talked about one of my girlfriends, there was a time where I would get up at 5am and I would work out because I'm a morning person. But like yeah. now it like, I'm not getting up at 5 a.m. to work out because I'm like just too tired and I have to listen to my body. And like, if I get up at seven, like that's okay. But like you said, you, maybe your body, like, do, and this is another question for you. Does your body shift? I mean, I don't know. I've heard this. It's, I don't know if it's a wise tale. Is it like every seven years our body changes or goes through some kind of shift or no? Sounds about right. I mean, when you think about this, the menstrual life cycle is fascinating. I, I'm a total nerd. Yeah. I have 600 studies in this book, by the way. Like, I'm wow, Nicole. Yeah, I, I know. I really went all out, especially because I'm a health coach. That's the other thing, too. I felt like I had to show up as best as I possibly could. So, wow. yeah, I'm held to a different standard because I'm not a doctor. But I, you know, I really delved so deep into this research. And I'm fascinated by the, the menstrual like, life cycle, like I said. And, you know, really, there's the puberty phase. And then there's the early 20s. And then there's the 30s. And that's like the, you know, fertility, postpartum you know, menstrual cycle sort of gets under control after the tumultuous teenage years. Yeah. And then in your 40s or th late 30s, 40s, you're going to perimenopause and then you go into menopause once you've not had a period for a year. So you're officially in menopause once you've not had a period for a year. So all of these are quite dramatic changes. I mean, when we talk about the hormonal shifts of just having, uh, being pregnant, that's, I mean, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and like you said too, a lot of us are freezing our eggs as well. And so that is a, a huge undertaking hormonally speaking and so that's you know to me another big thing but when you think about <clears throat> the fact that in your 20s you tend to be a lot more hormonally resilient and it's you know and you know because yeah. you can, you can <laughs> go out until two in the morning you can drink your face off you can eat fried three nights in a row all day <laughs> yes three, three nights in a row. row I was like what let's do it again and that seems like another universe at this point I'm just like how did I do that and not like that we went out in the middle of winter with no jacket on and a with heel dress and high heels yeah. like, what were we thinking I know we I see these girls now and I'm just like oh my god if I only have that kind of resilience still although it was the stupidest thing ever <laughs> and now it takes but, me like days i go out one night like 2 a.m 3 a.m and i'm like i'm done for like three days four well, days i can't even believe you can reach two or three a.m i can't <laughs> i'm just like by 11 p.m i'm so done i'm just like <laughs> if i'm not out of the house by eight o'clock i'm done so <laughs> it is hilarious and so i think that you know we kind of feel invincible at that time and i get it i really do but i also think that you know when we're at that age, it's a great time to be taking care of ourselves because what happens in your 20s kind of has an effect on your 30s and your 40s because all of this stuff builds on itself. I know. Yeah. But I think that we can do a lot of damage control in our 30s. So I, yeah. I do think that. I do really think that that you're more resilient in your in your early 30s than in your late 30s, early 40s. Yeah. However, when we're taking care of ourselves, like we're you know managing our stress the best we can, trying to get some kale into our diet yeah. and healthy fats and just and good protein that's going to support our hormones in a way that you know i mean like junk food never will so that to me is you know all of those bills points and so the, i think one of the biggest things that we should think about um as women in the modern world who are constantly offered hormonal birth control as a fix-all for basically everything or to just shut up all the symptoms that our bodies are clearly telling us something's wrong. And, you know, for the hormonal birth control, that is shutting off ovulation. Ovulation is such a vital process for female bodies in the sense that it helps us make estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. There's this whole hormonal cascade happening all throughout the month. And this is a good thing because estrogen supports our bones, our brain health, 
our our heart as well. So does yeah. progesterone, testosterone supports our mood, our musculature. So these are really critical hormones to our overall health. And if they are not being made in adequate amounts, we start to run on a deficit. I mean, that's what happened to me on the pill and I was not well at all. And so this is what I see over and over again. So if we can take that into account and take into account that if we make these little changes, think big changes will happen or big things will happen. You know, I just want everyone to know that our bodies are not as complicated as we've been led to believe. And that when you do make these incremental changes and adjustments, you will start to see improvements in whatever symptoms you're dealing with, no matter whether they're uh, menstrual issues or, you know, other health related problems. Yeah. And so I guess like, one more question, and then we can kind of wrap up. But yeah. is there any way because I know like the balance of the the estrogen, progesterone, like all of that, like, yeah. is, is it just the eating? Is it the sleeping? Is it everything you've talked about to kind of balance it out? Or is it because as we age, the was it the estrogen goes down? Is that how, it does eventually, up? but it tends to go up like in perimenopause. So mm -hmm. as you know, because what happens in from 35 onwards, we're supposedly in perimenopause, but you know, and we're told it's a terrible time, but it doesn't have to be. And, and that's really what I want to convey to everyone. Um, but yes, what happens typically is that in your late 30s, early 40s, sometimes for some of us, it's mid 40s, ovulation slows down. So we stop, we start not, or we stop ovulating as consistently. So one month we might have an anovulatory cycle, or we might have a few of those. And so when you don't ovulate, you don't make progesterone, in, at least in the levels that you would normally make that, because that egg where it, the follicle makes progesterone that the egg came out of. So you don't make enough progesterone. And so inevitably, it shifts the ratio. So mm -hmm. estrogen becomes dominant over progesterone. We start to see a lot of heavy periods, um, ongoing ble bleeding, spotting leading up to our period, migraines, PMS symptoms, sore boobs. That's all a sign of that estrogen creeping up over the progesterone. And, um, and that, you know, that's really frustrating because we're told like, well, you just go on the pill. You can't really do anything. Yeah. Like but I 100% believe that, you know, if you're taking into account your food, your blood sugar, which I, you know, I walk everyone through that. I really wanted to give everyone the answers. So blood sugar, food, um, your liver health, your gut health, your thyroid and your stress. And I, again, walk people through just the basics. Um, you will really, I, you, I feel fundamentally that you can change your period. You can wow. really totally change your period story. So yeah. yeah. And that can be it's over, uh, over 35, right? Like you're saying yeah. over 35, you can still make changes. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I have women who do my programs who are in their forties and truly it is amazing. They have seen remarkable results because they were just told, well, you're in perimenopause and it's going to stop from here on out. Wow. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Hell no. We cannot accept this. I feel like this is such BS that women are continually told that their bodies are just these unruly, crazy things and we just have to deal with this. And I'm just like, no, can we just take our power back already? We have to. We cannot accept or at least continue to accept these diagnoses of well, this is just the way it is. And I can offer you this, but that's it. And there's nothing you can do from a diet and lifestyle perspective. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> that is so not true. I just, I just refuse to believe that. And I've proven yeah. it over and over again with thousands of women who have, you know, done my program or, you know, now read my book or whatever. And they're seeing changes that they were told they would never see getting pregnant mm -hmm. when they were told they couldn't. I mean, it's miraculous. And that's that's a female body we're kind of yeah. miraculous oh my god nicole this is such a good like note to end on like it that gives like me and like like other people in their 30s and then closer to 40 like that yeah. gives like hope you know to be like you know okay yeah you're 34 and maybe you're you know your cycle's all messed up and you know and that's what i'm saying like the media and society like who do we listen to you know like there's so oh much god, noise going on and you doing over 600 studies and research like in this book like my gosh like that's amazing like I am like so excited to read it and, and start implementing because so. I know I'm you know like the eating like we could always get a little bit better like no one I think so too yeah I do and there's no judgment it's just like yeah, yeah there's always room for improvement around all of these things and that's okay that's the whole yeah. point of this that's why I wrote this thing yeah yeah I am so glad you wrote that I mean it's changing <laughs> it's gonna change millions of lives like you are just oh. phenomenal hold that space for me honey <laughs> yes so, yes I mean yes. you I, I know how long you've been working on this book and my gosh the research like 
you're such a powerhouse and you're such an expert. So, you know, every, where can people find you? Where do you want to drive them? Like, obviously, yeah. you can get the book. Yes. Oh, period. my gosh. I would love to. So everyone, if anyone's on, here we go. So this is Fix Your Period. It looks like it's for a teenager, but I promise it, is, promise it isn't. No, it looks <laughs> it's for all of us. I, I had a little fun with this cover because, you know, sometimes we got to take the seriousness out of this stuff and have a little cheeky fun. So yeah, yeah. anyways, you can go to fixyourperiod.com and uh, you'll find all the booksellers there that, I'm, that it's available through. And I also have bonuses that come with the book. So fixyourperiod.com, you enter your name, email, and ad, ad, or receipt, and yeah. you'll get um, a couple of things I mentioned. So there's a workbook and a few other things that come with the book itself to make it easy. Awesome, Nicole. Yeah. Anything you want to end on before we go? You know, I just want to say what you were saying really struck me about giving women hope. And that is truly what I want to do on in my during my time on this planet, because mm. Man, if there has ever been a time where we needed some hope, it would be now for our health. We have been, I feel like our bodies have been subjected to some seriously awful shit over the last however many hundreds of years. And in particular, in the last few decades with you know many of us being put on the pill from the time we're really young, which is not the way it was ever designed to do for basically every problem we have, being gaslighted, shut down. And I just think it's time that we reclaim this power that is inherent. I believe that we can start to pay attention to our body's wisdom and, and start to make decisions that are going to help us in the long run. So beautiful. Well, thank you, Nicole. Thank you. I'm going to leave the link in the replay. So they'll okay. have the link to go to. Um, guys, get her book. She's amazing, obviously. And Nicole, thank <laughs> okay. you for your time and energy. I really appreciate it. And um, this will be up in the replay, so it'll be available forever on my Instagram. So uh, thank awesome. you so much. Okay, thank you. All I'll right. talk to you soon.